Hey guys, it's Julie here. Let's take a look at the results for coding challenge number four. So the success rate was 44%. Let's uh, let's just jump right in here. I made this leaderboard here, very sexy. And uh, number one, number one place, hats off, everybody. The small creeper, very nice, 18 milliseconds. That's a pretty fast time for the test suite that I used. Uh, pretty good. Not quite as good as me, but still pretty damn good. So hats off to the small creeper. Number two, we got Slidey Bat. Number three, Michael. We got lots of lots of familiar faces, lots of familiar names in this list here. But uh, yeah, congratulations to everyone who managed to succeed. Congratulations to everyone who just submitted. It's it's always good to participate. Now, uh, this this uh, leaderboard here. It only shows the people who passed all cases, didn't time out, didn't fail. Uh, also, the first uh, submission to pass all cases goes to DX Zone. You get a little bonus there for that. Uh, so yeah, good times were had by all. Uh, here are my two solutions, Ultimate and Supplemental. You can click these links here and you can download the solution. So what I'm going to do here is the ultimate solution is crazy bullshit. I'm not going to go into it in this video, um, but the supplemental one is the basic solution that you're expected to come up with. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. So there's the basic solution, just basically 10 lines of code. And uh, well, how does it work? Well, let's uh, first let's let's bring it back a second. Let's look at the naive solution. So you've got an array of values. Now the naive solution is basically you uh, you start by selecting the first element. That's going to be your focus. And then for every element after that element, all these ones here, you take the difference between them. If this one is bigger, take the difference and then you compare that to a value that you're keeping. That's the maximum difference. So we'll we start this off with negative one. First thing here, this one's smaller, so skip it. This one, larger, difference is one. One is greater than negative one, so you set this to one. Next one is an eight. Four minus eight is four. This goes to four. Now you're done this one. So forget about this guy now. Now we set our focus to the next element and we're going to be comparing against these ones. So again, we do the difference here. That's two. Two is not greater than four, so skip it. And then we do this one, five. Five is greater than four. We up this to five. So you're doing a loop to loop through all the elements of focus and then you're doing another loop to basically yeah, loop through all the elements. So if this is your focus, you're going to loop through all the remaining elements. So this algorithm has a complexity of n squared. And that's not very good, so we would like to do better. And in fact, we can do a big O of N for this guy. So what you do for the, uh, the N algorithm is you start off, you say, okay, I'm going to start with this value, this guy here. We're going to keep a track of the min value that we've encountered so far. So we'll start that off with a 4, and then we're going to go max diff. Start that off with negative one. So we store this one in here, and then we start on this guy. And what we do is we see, is this bigger than the minimum that we've seen so far? No. Okay, then we're gonna update our minimum value to this guy. This is now our new minimum. And then we go to the next guy. Is this bigger than our minimum? Yes. So now we take the difference, that's two. Is that bigger than our max difference? Yes, so we update that. Next guy here. Is this smaller than our minimum? No. Is the difference bigger than our current max? Yes. Five, and then you're done. There you go. You just scan through all the values, updating the minimum you've seen so far, and updating the difference. You get a big old Venn algorithm, makes your, makes your Johnson real big, because you're fast and big fast man or woman, and it's all good. So in the code, that looks like what I just showed you there. Ten lines of code will do her. Keep track of the minimum we've seen so far. We keep track of the maximum difference. We initially set the minimum seen to the first element. We start looping from the second element up until the end. And first we check to see if the current element is greater than our current minimum. If so, we have a positive difference. So we take that difference and we try to update our current max difference using std max. And then down here we update our minimum seen using std min. You loop through all the elements, 
and then you return the maximum that you found, the maximum difference you found while looping through all the elements, and there you go, you're done. Pretty goddamn simple. Now, like I said, this ain't gonna be a tutorial, uh, that's it, but I wanted to just give you guys a little, a little bit of a lesson here, because a lot of people, I saw people talking on Discord, and they were saying, you know, like maybe they had a big O of N log N algorithm, they're like, is it possible to get a big O of N? And some people were asking, maybe is it possible to get a big O of log N or big O of one, uh, constant time? And it can be tricky to figure out, you know, to get a grasp of what could be possible, what sort of um, time complexity would be possible for a given problem. But there are some uh, decisions that you can make pretty easily and pretty assuredly. So, if we've got an algorithm like this, uh, we're doing the max difference, right? Uh, I can pretty much rule out log n and I can rule out constant time. Why? Well, think about it. Um, I To do log n time means that obviously I'm not going to be able to touch all of the elements in the container. Because if I touch all the elements, it's automatically at least uh, big O of n. So to do a log n means you're skipping elements. Could you, could you actually skip an element and still be sure to have the right answer? Because any element that you skip, that one could have contained a very large number, a, a huge number that would be larger than any of the other ones that you actually examined and that would impact your final result. So it's obvious that for this problem, you can't skip any numbers. And if you can't skip any numbers, you're gonna have at least big O of N. So that's my one little tip for you guys when you're analyzing time complexity of algorithms and problems. Uh, you can logically think, is it possible to skip numbers? And if it is not possible to skip numbers and still get the correct result, then you're gonna have at least big O of N. So yeah, that basic solution gets you, you know, about 250 milliseconds, 260 milliseconds. Now, if you want to break that barrier, uh, basically what I did, I used the same algorithm, but I parallelized it. I used multi-threading and uh, vectorization to make it highly parallel. Here's what that code looks like. You can see it's uh, considerably more complex than the uh, the basic solution, but at the heart, it's the same. Uh, it's the same algorithm, the same concept at its core. And uh, now, like I said, you can download this code on the challenge page. You can uh, you can run it. You can examine it. You can test it to your heart's content. But I will not be going over a detailed explanation of it in this video. It's going to be a huge pain in the ass, and I decided I'm going to do that only as a little uh, special bonus for the supporters. I want to reward the rewarders, so I'm going to try this out, a little trial, uh, as a Patreon exclusive video. You guys can unlock it, and I'm going to go over how I implemented this algorithm, what all the, uh, what all the parts of it mean, how it works in some detail, and uh, we'll see if people are interested. They'll make it a regular thing where I can uh, make a Patreon exclusive video for my ultimate solutions. If people aren't that interested, then I'll just stick to the basic solution for everyone. But that's going to be also up for you patrons. You can find that on the Patreon dashboard. And that's going to be it for this announcement video. Stay tuned. Uh, in the next uh, week or two, I plan on uh, maybe releasing the next challenge. We'll see. Uh, I'll probably give a little uh, prior notice on my Twitter if you guys follow that. You'll get a little heads up of when the challenge is going to start. The goal is to do about two challenges a month, but uh, still, got some, uh, still got some kinks to iron out of the system, so we're not quite there yet. Until then, I'm Chili. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And uh, I will see you soon with some more coding challenges.